Hey, a good streak of Elsigna Stella Rala. My name is Isaac, and I'm a member of the West Coast chapter of Finland. So, today we're reading a passage from Luke, it's chapter 11, 29 to 32. And in this story, Jesus has been on the road for quite some time. And every so often, people would come up to him and ask him for a sign, some kind of proof that he is who he says he is, that he is the Messiah. And um, judging from the response Jesus gives him, he seems to be become a bit fed up with this constant uh, wanting of proof. So um, he tells people that, come on, the only sign you will get is the sign of Jonah. Now, to us, this might be a bit vague, what does he actually mean? Uh, but I guess most of you would be familiar with the story of Jonah. Uh, Jonah uh, was a prophet in the Old Testament, and God wanted him to go to Nineveh, a town, and to warn them about their evil ways, and to repent and do better. But um, as I guess most of us would would feel, would understand, he felt a bit uncomfortable with this, this task, so he simply tries to run away from God. Uh, he does so by boat, and and uh, well, he ends up inside of a veil, actually a big fish, and spends three days within the fish contemplating his choices, and is then spat out on the beach again. And uh, after this, he actually goes to Nineveh, as the Lord wanted him to do. Now. What this story has to do with, with Jesus is, well, a bit vague, but there is a, a connection here because um, Jonah actually spent three days within the whale. And um, we are preparing for Easter as we speak. And during Easter we celebrate that Jesus died for our sins and then rose on the third day. So there's the similar three days here. So I guess that that would be the connection between these two events. Uh, but Jesus emphasizes that there will be more to the story of Jesus than to the story of Jonah. There's, there's more to that. There's, there's something else in this story. It's not just about following God and, and uh, allowing yourself to be what God created you to be. Uh, but... Um, He wants to, to just kind of emphasize that, that this event, the happenings during the Easter, this will be the sign to focus on. This will be the wonder to focus on. Uh, during these days, uh, wonder makers or different signs of, of every kind and, and style was commonplace. It was just part of life. Um, everything was interpreted and understood as, as signs and, and wonders. Whether these wonders would be legit is another question and, and true, but, but they were a part of life. So, so Jesus, as the, the doer of wonders, was not necessarily so special to that time as he might seem to us during our days. So, so yeah, it makes him famous, but he's not the only one doing wonders in some sense. So, um, as a human, I think it's very easy to be awestruck by amazing wonders and stories of wonders. Um, I think most of those who have been, been active Christians for a while have heard the stories about limbs growing out and the blind people who, can, who got their sight back. And um, it is very human to be kind of amazed by this. It's also easy to kind of be blinded by the cool music and and praise songs and praise events that you might see at some churches and and just fall into the, the rabbit hole of trying to be cool to attract people. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not throwing out the possibility of wonders and denying that, that God or Jesus would not be able to do wonders. I think he still do and still does. But um, when it comes to being awestruck and all these cool things, I think Jesus really points us to another way of looking at this. He sets another example for us. 
he comes to us as a servant. He got down here among us for about 2,000 years ago, and life was harder than it is nowadays. That That's just the way it was. Um, so he did it the hard way. He shared the road with us, and he, he served us. At the end of the story, Jesus is killed for his teachings. And um, he takes this punishment because he loves you and me. He wants us to have the truth. And this is the only wonder that really matters. That Jesus loved me and you enough to sacrifice himself for me, for you, for us, for everybody. But consider in this in this instance I think it speaks louder to me to put this on a personal level. It was for me. Simply for me. Everything else he's done is well icing on the cake basically. He died for me. Somebody loves me enough to give his life for me. And that, my friends, that is the true wonder within the story. God bless you.